back down here working on the rudder. Uh, last weekend, after I riveted the trailing edge, I did start on the leading edge here and went ahead and, and bent, uh, formed this, this small section here. Uh, that was pretty straightforward. I did it with this one inch uh, piece of PVC. Now, one inch is the inside diameter on a piece of PVC like this, so it's really like 1.3 inches in diameter, something along that lines on the outside diameter. The, the plans in section five recommend using a one inch diameter pipe or broomstick, but then uh, in the RB10 section seven, it mentions that on these bigger rudders, you're better off using a one and a quarter inch diameter pipe. So that's why I'm using the, the thicker, you know, the bigger diameter piece of PVC. I did find that on this one, you know, once you've, once you've kind of got the initial bend going, uh, the, you know, you, you'll need to come back and, and finish it off with your hands to, to really make the pieces come together. I actually used uh, the one inch broom handle for, I think it's about an inch, but I use the broom handle to kind of continue the bend and, and, you know, sort of massage it along. And that seemed to work pretty well, so I'll probably go ahead and do the same thing on the rest of these sections. So uh, a couple of minutes, my wife's going to come down and help me do that. I'll probably, you know, I'll have her twist on the end of the pipe and I'll sort of help it along and form it along. You know, you need to hold down on it and kind of down and out and roll it. You're not you don't want to put the bend back here against the spar. The idea is to try to roll the skin in. And so it, it's definitely a two-person job for that. So we'll get started. So before we get started, what I thought I'd show here uh, is that I've made this T-handle. Uh, there you can see it, and you won't be able to see it later um, because I kind of block it in the video. Uh, but so I thought I'd show it here. What I did was just took a PVC T and some you know, additional lengths of the one-inch pipe and made a handle. Uh, and at first I just used, you know, I figured the friction would be enough, uh, just the tight pieces of PVC fitting together, so I didn't glue it. Uh, but it wasn't enough, and it would start to slip when my wife twisted on it. So uh, I went ahead and I drilled a hole and put a screw in there uh, just to hold it because I didn't feel like gluing it. It was the only piece of the only PVC T that I bought for this purpose, and so rather than glue it onto a fixed length of pipe, I figured I would, um, you know, because I'm going to have to do the different sections of the rudder and uh, have different lengths of, you know pipe sticking off the end of that thing. So anyway, I just drilled a hole and screwed it in, and that way I'll be able to use it on different lengths for the rudder sections and then the elevator, aileron, flat, whatever else I need to, to do this trick to. Um, but that worked great. So, uh, you know, it allowed my wife to apply a twisting force without, um, you know, without having to apply much force, and that way she could do it in a much, you know, very controllable way. So, um, Really, that worked out really well. So obviously, we've already done the, the one piece, flipped it over, and uh, doing the other side. Um, and yeah, the only real, you know, kind of trick to this is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that one pipe is it's too big uh, to really get the full bend on it. So then, you know, I switch it out for this broom handle, which I didn't have a a, a, a T. And so uh, instead, I end up using a couple of pairs of vice grips and uh, grabbing hold of the broom handle that way. That worked okay. Uh, there were some times where the, you know, you have to position them just right so that you can get a twist before it starts, you know, interfering with the spar. And even then, the vice grips I used were kind of chunky, uh, and so you know they would start, it would, the spar would start getting in the way. Uh, but it worked out okay. Maybe I'll rig up a T-handle of some sort on my broom handle next time. Uh, so then once I got it to that point, you know, I sort of stood it up on the trailing edge here so I could really sort of put a lot of force on it. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where you, you just have to 
sort of get up the courage to put enough force on it. You know, you're you're twisting and squeezing and pushing and hoping that something doesn't give and bend in a place where you don't want it to. Um, and nothing like that ever happened. And of course, you're you're sitting there doing it, thinking, "Is this too much? This seems like a lot," uh, but it's not. And uh, you know, the the plans say you're going to have to sort of get it into the final shape with your hands, and that's what you end up doing. So, um, uh, you know, it took a lot of trial and error, uh, but I never, never really ended up getting it bent too far. Um, a lot of it to try to get, you know, a nice smooth curve. Um, you know, my wife's kind of looking down, telling me whether it looks even, looking down, down along the length of the rudder there, along the spar. And, um, you know, you can, you can sort of eyeball it pretty well. And it's just, uh, like I say, it's just a lot of trial and error and, and working on it. Uh, moving, going slowly. And, you know, as I, as I look back and watch this, uh, I realize, you know, we, we worked back and forth. Uh, you know, a little bit on the left side, a little bit on the right side, back, back and forth. Uh, until I, you know, got it sort of really, the, the two pieces formed to where they would, uh, you know, meet in the middle and have a nice... Uh, a nice curve. So, uh, yeah, I did, uh, I may have mentioned this in the last video, but I did go ahead and uh, do a couple of steps out of order intentionally here uh, in the plans. They have you forming these curves and then uh, putting the lap joint, you know, the little very minor bend uh, in the, the edge of one side, uh, the side that's going to be on the on the top or on the outside uh, where the two pieces come together. I did that step first uh, before I bent them because um, it was going to be easier to, to make that, uh, especially with the little tool that I have, it was going to be easier to do that, um, you know, before trying to bend them or, you know, before they were bent into, into shape. So I guess uh, because of the sort of direction of the tool that I have, I put the lap joint on the right hand skin which means that the right-hand skin was sort of predetermined to be the one that was going to be, uh, you know, on top or in the front uh, once the once the bends were formed. But uh, that worked out well. I'm definitely glad I did it in that order. And so now we move on to the bottom section. This section was actually a little easier. Uh, it was, you know, maybe that's just because it's down near the bottom and closer to the end that you're twisting on. Um, also, it's just bigger, uh, you know, it's a bigger radius. So that's one thing about the rudder, the way it tapers, you know, from bottom to top, it means the radius of these tunnels you're forming are smaller near the top part of the rudder than the bottom. And so you have to sort of take that account into account when you're twisting. It's not um, that difficult, but it also means that the top part of the pipe will bump up against the spar web, uh, you know, as you're twisting, you know, before the, before the bottom part does. So uh, you just kind of keep all that in mind, and, and that you know, that sort of influences uh, the diameter of the pipe you can use, and you move to the from the pipe to the broom handle. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so we go ahead and, and do this part, and uh, as you can see, I've got the middle section Clico together there now, and uh, just more of the same. So at this point, I've match drilled all the holes, and uh, now I'm using this wonderful new tool that I have to set the blind rivets um, in the holes. It's a pneumatic blind rivet uh, you know, gun squeezer setter. Uh, so anyway, uh, 69 bucks from Harbor Freight shipped. Um, you know, using the handheld squeezer is not difficult, and there's not a lot of blind rivets in the plane by comparison. So. I didn't really think about buying this tool at first, but uh, one thing I could say is it's really consistent. You know, when you're using the handheld squeezer, you're moving, you're kind of wiggling around, at least I am when I'm doing the squeezing. And, you know, this thing, you just hold it in position and pull the trigger and pow. Uh, so, and for 69 bucks, by comparison to a lot of the tools in this project, 69 bucks is a bargain. So, uh, really glad I bought this. A couple of different people recommended it to me, and um, so I appreciate that. And yeah, it made this, you know, pretty quick work. So, um, 
just move it along as with most of the rivets that I've done so far along an edge like this. I'll start in the middle and work my way out, skipping every few, and then come back and do the ones in between. Some folks may have also noticed that I've got a new roll around uh, stool thingy there. Um, I'll throw a picture of that in at the end. That's pretty nice. Uh, my son put that together for me. So between that and I've actually, uh, since this video was made, I've raised up my table uh, on some pretty big casters. So uh, between those two things, hopefully I'll stop complaining about the table height. So that's about it for this one.